Watch your move past. So if you'll come with me to an almost alternative reality where Sir Anthony Hopkins is a James Bond style action star in an Alistair McLean spy adventure. Hopkins plays Her Majesty's Secret Service agent Philip Calvert, um, a bit of a rebel who has problems with authority, which does sound a bit like a certain double O agent. Um, along with his sidekick, he's been tasked to stop the hijacking of gold bullion shipments into the Irish Sea. So when a mission to board a shipment boat results in two dead agents and Calvert only just getting away by the skin of his teeth, this in turn leads to a series of double and ultimately triple crosses uh, that, of course, then lead to a castle set final showdown. Let's take a look. So after 1967's You Only Live Twice, uh, Sean Connery left the Bond franchise uh, temporarily, as we'd say. Uh, and its future was in doubt. This created a temporary vacuum in the spy genre. Uh, and this film, along with many others, were an attempt to fill that gap. Um, now, the 007 movies are, of course, pretty much a genre unto themselves. And when Eight Bells Toll certainly doesn't have the huge budget and globe hopping and glamorous locations, it does have a rough and rugged quality that I really enjoy. <laughs> So, put out of the way first, even though this being a McLean adaptation, the actual narrative takes a, a backseat to the zany set pieces. Uh, we have graveyard punch-ups, uh, a knife fight, uh, a blowtorch duel beneath the waves, uh, some mountain climbing thrown in there. Um, although in fairness, this ditches McLean's original solving the case style ending and substitutes it for a, a massive shootout in a cave beneath a castle. <laughs> Anyway, we have a load of gold bullying being pinched and Sir Anthony Arthur Arnford Jones, uh, played by Robert Morley, tasks Hopkins' character Calvert to investigate uh, as he specialises in underwater work. He's accompanied by a sidekick, intelligence specialist Hunslet, played by Colin Redgrave. Um, and of course, along the way, he bumps into a beautiful woman, played by uh, Natalie Delon. And even though he and us uh, are both sure she's an enemy agent, it'd be ungentlemanly to turn down her advances. You don't trust me one bloody inch, do you? Doesn't it feel good to be a woman of intrigue? And mystery? Now, Craig, I haven't even mentioned the subplot about a group of Scottish shark fishermen with questionable allegiances. Uh, this film's only 94 minutes long, by the way. And if you swap out the gold bullion for nuclear weapons, it's essentially a remake of Thunderball, which, to be fair, has been remade hundreds of times in one way or another since. Guys, I'm Stephen at Real Classic Film Reviews. Here on the channel, uh, I like to talk about and champion classic film, cult cinema and hidden gems. I also do physical media pickups and unboxings, so if you're interested in that kind of content, consider subscribing to the channel, leaving a comment or a like. It really helps, and I really appreciate it. Now back to the movie. So When Eight Bells Tour was directed by a Belgian filmmaker named Etienne Perrier. I'm not too sure who that was, as I don't think I've seen anything else he's made. Uh, the film was also Sir Anthony Hopkins' first top billed lead role uh, in a feature film. And although he wouldn't go on to do any sequels to this, it's relatively poor box office to blame. He'd gone to forge a brilliant career uh, regardless. Uh, here he's more of an everyman than a super spy, even though he has moments of action hero invincibility. Hopkins plays Calvert as more of a regular guy trained to do a, a difficult job. Um, kind of think Michael Caine in the Harry Palmer films. As an out-and-out -out action star, I'm not sure he's totally convincing. You also can't imagine Sean Connery at the height of his glamorous super spying, wandering around a very grey and unglamorous Scottish coastline. Uh, a great helicopter reconnaissance scene culminates in a crash on a cliff, followed by a hold-your-breath sequence as Calvert tries to survive beneath the water as his would-be assassins search the ocean surface. So when Eight Bells Toll is set in a permanently overcast and wet and windy atmosphere, and I do like that as a replacement from the 60s, you know, blue skies and martini sort of tropical beach idea of being a British agent, they're replaced here with a more kind of pessimistic outlook. Uh, this, of course, was the year of Straw Dogs and A Clockwork Orange, uh, Ten Rillington Place and Get Carter, all films that have that drab kind of cynical outlook on society. 
Now, the film does have that garish 70s feel to it, uh, very much so when we find ourselves on board the Shangri-La, uh, the boat belonging to sketchy businessman Sir Anthony Skouros, uh, played by Jack Hawkins. It's a very dirty looking film, even in these interior scenes, all cigars, brandy and god-awful decor. Uh, now, Hawkins, bless him, uh, is a sad sight here. Six years before making this, he'd been diagnosed with throat cancer and, and subsequently had his entire larynx removed. Uh, here he's dubbed by actor Charles Gray, who dubbed most of his parts for him before Hawkins died uh, in 1973. Perhaps we should drink to those in peril on the sea. Are we in peril? There's always peril in these waters. Now, Robert Morley does his usual eccentric, uh, giddy turn as Calvert's handler. Um, think a kind of comedy M from the Bond films. Any usefulness or effectiveness you might have had has now been entirely dissipated. Can't talk now. Goodbye. We've lost two friends. We've lost the vessel. We've lost the element of secrecy. We've lost him, sir. Calvert. Calvert! It probably needs that bit of light relief to keep it from being like overly serious. Uh, although the filmmakers tacked on an over-the-top explosive finale onto McLean's original story, there's enough actual investigating and clue finding going on here uh, to make the film an interesting watch. Uh, and although it's undoubtedly not the Bahamas, uh, the Scottish coastal scenery is stunning in its own brutal way, all spiky cliffs and crashing waves. Uh, so yeah, it didn't spark a new spy series to rival the James Bond films. Um, obviously after the Connery Lazenby contractual shenanigans, uh, Connery would briefly return and Roger Moore would then go on to establish a character that's a million miles away from Anthony Hopkins. Uh, but I'd argue as Bond pushed its tongue further into its cheek, um, that there was a market for a darker, more serious spy action series. And while ultimately this may not have been that series, uh, When Eight Bells Told does give a good flavour of what a potential franchise might have been like. Go check it out. Is it loaded? Yeah, it sure is. Sins of the flesh, my friend. Never pay. <laughs> 